Hey, I'm Eric Haugen. Check the description box below for tabs and backing tracks on my website, information about exactly what sound tools I'm using today, and all the links. We're talking about the place between rhythm and lead and how to get there. Here's what I say to do. Whatever song you're going to do this approach to, first thing you always got to do, should come as no surprise to you, you got to look at those changes there. I'm pulling the changes from a great, great Idols tune from their record, Crawler, the Beachland Ballroom, E, F sharp minor, A, and C sharp minor. And yeah, you could do some analysis, be like, okay, that's the one, going to the two, going to the four, going to the six. That's handy for songwriting. But for this place of the intersection between rhythm and lead, you know, not as necessary as you would think. So, of course, then the first thing, let's just play it. Just chilling. <laughs> And because of the groove of this, there's a real old school kind of R&B vibe to this punk song, or I guess you'd call it post. I don't know what you would call it. I'd call it freaking awesome. Go check the song out. Now here's the thing. Guitar is so commonly taught that like, What's up, bro? Here's your chords. You chop at them. And then if you wanted to play something melodic, it's like, well, okay, uh, here's your scale. So it's actually very difficult to find the way to, to in the same place, exchange those ideas fluidly. And again, it should come as no surprise to you, those of you who know my channel, the way I think to do that is caged. And we're gonna talk about that in a second. I have a new course coming out with True Fire. It is available for pre-order right now. It is playing the changes. And yes, it deals with this stuff in great detail and in, in what I would like to think is a very musical and tasteful way. The course drops for official release June 5th, which I think is Monday. It's Friday right now that you're seeing this. What's up? Um, go to my website, check it out, purchase it from there. That's an affiliate link. That's how I make my bread off these courses. Let's walk it through though. This is the way I see everything. I have not exhausted the cage structures and the pentatonics that go with them. It's all about those layers, bro. It's all about the layers. So. Here's the five shapes of E. Again, I'm gonna actually put all the tabs and the charts up on my website for free as my you know, way of being like, here you go, here's, here's the free version, why don't you go ahead and help a brother out. Um, here's the five shapes of E, let's hear those. The E that we know so well. Uh-oh, what about this one? Yeah, the, the E that looks like a D technically, there's the D, but you need the root. The E that looks like a C chord. The E that looks like an A chord. And then the E that looks like a G. Bro, that's it. That's all the, sh all the shapes of E. All the triads, all the arpeggios, all the scales. They're all going to fit inside that shelving unit. You, 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 and you. Yeah, this beautiful, beautiful Daniel Fields custom guitar. This is the prototype. I'm going to have him build me one because it's so freaking awesome. He, he takes commissions, y'all. Link, link below, link below. It's a freaking cool guitar. But yeah, he didn't put fret markers on the front. They're on the side. Look at that work he did there. I, this guitar, is, it sings, man. And it's got, like, I think the best neck I've ever held. But yeah, there's the shapes of E chord. And then tucked into those. Same areas, same place, in the same Z's place, you got your shapes of E major pentatonic, because here's the deal. This is not, I haven't run out of gas with this concept in 20 years, the idea that wherever you have a major chord, yo, drop a major pentatonic on it and see what happens. It's a great way to make up guitar parts and fills. 
it's a great way. All right, let's check it. So, you know, you have an E major pentatonic for this guy. Let's see, is there an E major pentatonic for this guy? You can bet there is. And for this guy. And for this guy. And for this guy. And so when I drop in there with, um, after the little G-sharp minor, the intro thing. Which, yeah, that's a classic one. Yeah, that's, we've, we've seen that before. That's, you know, uh, 9 to 11, and then those are 7s. Notice that clean hammer on there. It's not, it's clean. And then my brain, it knows that there's an F sharp chord there. And so I'm sliding back and that's also the vocal melody. And then, yeah, the name of the game or what, what makes this work is, and this is important, is the ability to see both those things at the same time. When I'm playing a melody, I can see the chord shape. When I'm playing a chord, I can see those melodic options at the same time. That is how, that's the thing. That is the way. That is the way to do it. That like, realize that, that you're, if I'm playing melody, where's the harmony? If I'm playing harmony, where's my melody options? Let's look at those. Yeah, to always try and see the two layers that are available to you. If you're playing a chord, where's the scale? If you're playing the scale, where's the chord? It's a big deal. It's not easy. It's not easy. I've said that before. This ain't easy. This instrument's never easy, but that's kind of why I love it. That, like, if you check out at all, you know, uh, yeah, you, you, it clunk. You just you squonk it, you clunk it, and then you just got to respect it always. So here's... All my shapes of F sharp minor chord. Or that. And yeah, again, I'll, I'll include all this with the tabs. Here's my shapes of, yeah, good old F sharp minor pentatonic. There they all are. Again, each one goes right into the layer with that chord shape. Chord, scale, chord, scale. That's how to get to that place between rhythm and lead is by seeing both those things and be very patient about it. Check out my course. That's all I got to say. Please buy my course. It makes a big difference if you do. All right, so nine, seven, six. There's the chord structure I'm seeing. And I actually just let it hang. That's all I did, which is that's still minor pentatonic on that. Then, you know, I was like, well, I'm just going to let that sing. And yeah, my brain is, is, it knows the changes and saying, Eric, an A is coming next, dude. And, you know, so I'm like, um, where's a nearby A? Well, there is this one. But my brain, let's go to the easier one. Let's go here. And that's why I did that. That is fifth fret. That is fourth fret. Because here's the A chord, our classic fifth fret bar chord. And yeah, this I, I'll, I think every time I do this lick, this little Hendrix double stop, I, I call this out for the rest of your life. Doesn't matter what key or chord you're in. If you grab this shape, you can always do. That's like a classic major pentatonic double stop. That's why I did that there. And I think I went up to. Now that is a little bit me being spicy. That's a little next layer advanced going up to this, this ninth fret note. Because I knew the A that's in the key of E, which is what, you know, this amazing, amazing song is in. But I also knew it would make a major seven on top of that A chord, which, yeah, is, it makes a very dramatic chord. It's a beautiful chord. O, oh, seven, nine, nine. And then. 
man, yeah. I, you know what? That's from, that's from Radiohead, electioneering. I think Johnny's doing it up on D. I forget the riff now, yeah. But yeah, and so I kind of connected that across that way, so yeah. But also, I can spot the A chord here, can you? O, 11, 9. No, wait, O, 11, 9, 10. That's right, yeah. Yeah, that's a classic. And again, C shaped one. And then again, I was playing something melodic, but my, you know, I said this, I think, and I don't know what, but there's always a second. Eric over my shoulder, who's very nice. He's a nice, nice guy also, who's like, Eric, watch out. Here comes a C sharp. Do you know where you are? Do you know where the next C sharp minor is? And that's actually pretty easy. If you're on this A here, boom, there's a C sharp minor right there, isn't there? Ninth fret. So yeah, just, just a blues bend there. Daniel made these pickups too. Everything just bespoke about this guitar. Good job, Daniel. Daniel does all my setup work on all my guitars, too. And he's a freaking great guitar player. And that's what you want. You want someone who you like the way they play to work on your stuff, because I can trust if he thinks it plays good, it's going to play good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that, you know, I'm on that C-sharp minor just doing, you know, classic minor pentatonic things. I think I did this here. Yeah, just bending around with that 11. And then a little Hendrixy. I love that again, playing around with that clean double stop there, only getting that note. That 12th fret. And that's a Harris. And then switch to my man George Harrison, bending on that 9th fret. And then as I'm fading to this part, I'm just doing major pentatonic on E because, yeah, that's what happens in the song. In that position, then the octave up. And then the octave up. Okay, there you have it. So to review, you always play the changes first. And, you know, get a good feel for that. And then realize, like I said, wherever you're playing a chord, that there's a pentatonic scale right with it. And then the next question you might have is, well, Eric, why don't I just play in the scale from the key? Which you can absolutely do. That is definitely a thing you can do. Generally, though, for making up guitar parts, walks, and fills, it's going to be safer, easier to use pentatonics because they're the caveman scale. They're the scale that was around before there was even music theory, and so they don't have little half steps in them that can get you into trouble if you're not like, oh, okay, I'm on the four chord, that means I need to be playing Lydian right now, or et cetera, et cetera. I'm like, build, do this first. Get good at this way first, and then, then you can add to it. It's just if you drop yourself in in a, in a more advanced place, then it's harder to go back. So that's always my concern. I think that makes sense. Those of you who follow my channel, thank you. You know how I like to do things. I'm like, what's the simplest way? Hmm, cage shapes and pentatonics. And yeah, the course I put together, I'm, I, it, it's really about chord progressions, the music theory that goes with them. And then the playing over them is actually very simple. And it's because if the chord progression is dope, then you don't have to do that much. It's not about what can I shoehorn in here. It's about just tracing the line of the chord progression. So again, you can go to my website. You can check out. There's a the little intro video and decide for yourself if you want to do it. Playing the Changes comes out June 5th. That is a Monday. Um, and yeah. Thank you so much to everybody who supports me in all the ways that you do, buying my courses, but also like, subscribe, share. That all helps with that algorithm relevancy, which is, that's, you know, that's the name of the game uh, these days. It's, it's all about clicks and likes. It's weird. It's weird. Um, but hey, that's my gig now. So please do that. 
Uh, on my website, you can book one-on-one -on -one lessons with me to talk about guitar or to consult with someone about like musical life goals. What should I be doing? What should I not be doing? You know, I like to do that action plan type stuff. You can also support me on Patreon for as little as $2 a month. And there's a host of rewards that come with that. I try to make sure that's an educational um, and useful space as well. And then, of course, yeah, the third way I keep the lights on here is my partnership with TrueFire.com and the courses I make uh, with them. As Bill and Ted would say, be excellent to each other. That includes yourself. Happy Friday. Eat pizza. Look at this guitar. Just, just look at this.